One of the things that has happened with the building codes over the last 10, 15, 20 years uh, around the country is the introduction of energy codes. Uh, not every place around the country will have one, but uh, a number of years ago, hardly any had them. Uh, and now they're pretty much uh, happening everywhere around the country. So it's quite possible you might get a question that references an energy code. And the concept of the energy code is that uh, there are a series of rules and regulations that uh, mean that whenever you're designing a new space, you are designing it in such a way that it doesn't waste energy. Now, it seems sort of obvious, but that used to be just the purview of the building owners uh, that they would decide whether they wanted a more efficient or a less efficient building. And so they would either you know, design in such a way that they use a lot of energy or they didn't use a lot of energy. Well, the municipalities have realized over the years that this has a pretty dramatic effect on uh, the municipality overall, on the city overall, uh, that you find that uh, if we have situations where everybody is using a lot of energy, that means we have to have power plants that can supply that energy. It means uh, that in the sort of peak work moments, there's a huge amount of energy needed, but then what do we do when we don't need that peak and we have all these excess uh, power plants around that are only there for those peak moments. Uh, so the idea of the energy code is to start finding ways to bring down the energy use across the board, uh, not because we want to control people what, like how they uh, live their lives or what their work situation is, but because we're worried about the city overall that uh, there's too much energy use uh, by the city overall means we have more pollution, more uh, uh, power plants that have to get built, and we have to find ways to fund those, and uh, all of those, we have to use more energy to do that. So uh, this is a, a way to kind of reimagine uh, how to, to make sure that everybody is using a sort of reasonable amount of energy. So we're not going to go too deep into it because it uh, gets a little complicated pretty fast, but some of the sort of short elements that would be useful to remember. One is that one of the ways this will be thought of is as watts per square foot. Uh, so if I have a office setting, um, back in you know the sort of 70s or something, we would just put a whole bunch of lights in. You know, the place would be filled with lights. Uh, in the 50s would be same kind of thing. In the 80s, they started being a little smarter about it. And then in the 90s, people started realizing, wow, we're wasting a lot of energy. We just have lights all over the place. Uh, and now, especially with so many uh, computers around, you actually, in a lot of situations, just don't need that much light. You need enough light for people to be safe and to be able to read papers and things like that. Uh, but we don't need as much light as we used to think that we needed. And so a lot of the rules now will say something like, you're allowed to have one watt per square foot, something like that. So you can calculate up a room and say, all right, for this room, uh, I have uh, you know, 380 square feet, so that gives me 380 watts. Now, if I was using an old uh, incandescent bulb system, that would be essentially uh, three or four uh, 100 watt bulbs, right? It would be a very inefficient system for something that's 380 square feet. Well, fortunately, we have a lot more choices these days than just those old incandescent bulbs. Uh, so maybe I'm using a fairly efficient uh, uh, fluorescent system or I'm using an LED-based system. But either way, I'm going to start to find to make sure that we are using uh, only, in that case, 380 square feet, 380 watts. I can then divide it up any way I want. I might have uh, you know, a 10-watt bulb very regularly. I might have uh, you know, more like a 40-watt uh, uh, luminaire every so often, and I can add that up to sort of get to be uh, the equivalent of uh, the 380. But this is a way of sort of saying you don't need to put in a thousand watts into a 380 square foot space, right? It's just sort of a simple way of, of kind of relating the energy use to the size of the space. Uh, and then the designers get to sort of decide, well, how does that play out? Uh, it's a very useful way of thinking about it and uh, is uh, pretty universal these days. Uh, that concept is likely to show up somewhere on the exam when they start talking about energy codes. Another sort of concept is the ASHRAE comparisons. So uh, ASHRAE is the uh, sort of governing body of heating systems, uh, people who, who design heating systems. And uh, the thought there is that there's the sense that 
Uh, a typical system at a typical moment in time takes a certain amount of energy for heating uh, and a certain amount of energy for cooling per square foot. And uh, you can judge that against uh, previous ones. And we can say, well, in the past it uh, was X, now we're gonna try to do it 80% of X, right? So you're using yearly comparisons uh, as a way to sort of constantly try to get more energy efficient systems. Uh, this is how LEED works, um, that uh, you get points if you are better than the average, if you are sort of always uh, sort of pushing to make things better than the average. But then clearly, if a bunch of people are getting better than the average, well then the average is getting better. And so five years later, better than the average has to be even better because the average has changed. Right? So uh, that's one of the ways that the energy code can work, is that they start uh, um, aligning with set times, set moments in time, and saying, here's the average from ASHRAE, and then if we uh, move that along to five years later, ten years later, that average has changed. And so you're having to match to something that's constantly uh, moving along as a way to make sure that the city is always keeping up uh, and making an energy efficient place. Uh, so this is going to be about heating and cooling. It's going to be about the devices that people use, lights and, and all of the uh, electrical equipment. It's going to be about uh, the, um, are, are these Energy Star appliances, things like that, that meet a certain uh, level of expectation. Uh, all of those things would show up in the energy code. Now, not everything has to follow the energy code. Uh, if you're talking about a uh, business use, that would have to follow it. A single family house may or may not. It would depend on the municipality. Uh, you know, certain kinds of settings like uh, a, a stadium or a theater or something like that, uh, it would be hard for them to meet the same kinds of codes because they have such a strange set of lighting issues and, and strange needs of uh, uh, trying to cool a space that suddenly fills with uh, 500 people and then all those people leave. Like certain things it doesn't make sense for but those kind of everyday spaces like an office building or like a, a retail space, those kinds of spaces will absolutely uh, have uh, the energy code attached to them. So like I said, this is something that didn't really exist a long time ago. Now it's sort of come into vogue and the whole point is to s sort of think of it from the city's standpoint because we don't want to keep building um, these power plants, we don't want to have all this extra pollution. So instead of putting out all this excess energy that we don't need, we find ways to sort of limit it and keep it reasonable. It might be in a watts per square foot sense, it might be in using Energy Star, it might be in just uh, making sure that every new construction uh, is held to a higher and higher standard uh, from the ASHRAE standards. Any of those things might be uh, something that you would have to deal with and something that would be on that energy code.